Great. Uh, I wanted to basically give you an explanation about uh, the singles. Um, single prints are from market profile theory, and I kind of use them for uh, supply and demand. Once again, I was introduced to this by uh, another uh, trader, and uh, I kind of developed it, and you know, it gives me a good bias of any stock or the indices to see where it's going. For the indices, there's um, more like the market profile that I use. So I'm just going to show you that. This is the market profile from the, the ES. Uh, this is the kind of structure that I look at. And I mean, for the ES, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, I have a various way of looking at it. Um, I'm looking at the TPOX, uh, singles, failed singles um, that got basically um, uh, filled. And uh, this was an area where sellers were shut off. This is for the 27th of May, 2020. So basically, uh, it was a really weird day in the markets. Uh, markets tanked early in the morning and then really came back to levels where these were previous single prints from previous sessions, which I had highlighted. This is the ES that basically came out really perfectly at that area. And I'm not saying I bought here, but I was able to ride this high volume node uh, by seeing that the top of the high value node was being uh, basically it was holding and then we have a new single print that got created here just want to highlight that out so basically single prints the way I see it it's it's an area where really a, 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 an important uh, structural change occurred when it comes to um, supply and demand so, I mean, you could also say it in a way where, you know, look, I mean, sellers had the edge and then here they basically gave away. And that's kind of like my area for this, for the market to hold initially uh, overnight or the next day. And uh, that's how I look at the market uh, when it comes to single prints. This strategy works great as well on indices, on stocks, individual stocks. And I wanted to basically take the time to go over one stock that I've not done. So this is my uh, trade, trade, trading view, where basically just for fun, you know, I kind of like, here's my information. Um, I go over different um, stocks that I look at. And one stock that was really, really interesting recently was uh, Alibaba. Now, I don't think I have it up here, do I? Uh, I don't, so I could look at that after, but let's just look at Google for now. So basically, um, let's go and identify single prints before. I'm actually doing this video for a friend who seems to have a hard time understanding what exactly single prints are. So the reason I'm doing this is really for him to understand, first of all, and maybe to just apply this in a, on a structural basis with stocks and just, you know, make sure that he, he knows exactly what this is all about, first of all. Single prints always function with either eat uh, the electronic trading hours for the indices or uh, regular trading hours for stocks. For stocks, I only use it for, for regular trading hours. I don't really mind about the overnight. So basically, here, this is Google. As you can see, the market opened here at 9:30 Eastern. Google, nothing here. This here is the first initial break of a new low on a 30-minute time frame here as you can see look it's going to show you there but that's not a single print a single print is basically for me a single print is an area where the market on this candle this one here the next candle should not re-enter the area of the single print so we need a single print that's not filled so that's not an accurate single single print here but the accurate single print would be actually this one here look this last bar at 3.3 Eastern made a new low and the next bar basically never really came back to retouch this area. We're back in it now. Look at the close as of today, 27th of May. So this area for me is now going to be a supply. Sorry, this is not right. This is going to be a supply area. So I'm just going to put this here. So this is how I identify areas you want to have a bias so you want to know if this what is it 
1424. Now, it's developed because we've had time price opportunity, which is a new ounce of the market profile. We've had at least one, two, three, four. We've had a retest. So we've had at least four time frames under this that have confirmed participation and have confirmed the importance of this level. Okay, that's how simple it is. So I'm just gonna try to identify other areas here. If we can find maybe developed uh, demand, demand and all that. So the way I do this is I generally have my arrows. This is that, and that's an area that I extend and it's just gonna give me bias for the future. So in case Google, the way I look at this, Google flights, uh, floats around here, but cannot close above this area for the next couple of days. This 1424 will be a very important area, okay? Now, let's go find some other, I just copied these from another chart, so I'm just gonna wrap it up. Okay, sorry for that, I had to cut off there, but here, this last candle, it made a new high in the day, so it's again one session, one full session. We made a new high in the day. This level right here, as you can see. Again, this is a 30 minute chart, as you can see at the top here, it's a 30 minute chart. This is not a single print because the next candle, even if it's uh, the next day, we came back to retouch it. So basically, I want a demand or supply where it's not it's not revisited um, in the next candle. It kind of like opens up a gap. It's like an internal uh, intraday gap uh, for singles. So I don't see any here, but I think we've got one here. Just gonna double check. It's 10 o'clock, so that's the 9.30 candle. This is a 10 o'clock candle, and boom, here we are. That's our single point. This candle goes over the last one. This candle is not able to retest this level, important level, and as you can see, it acts as support again, and that could have been an area to buy, or a little bought calls whatever on google and that would have been a great area to go and lean on for the long side so that's what price again 1374 just you know rounding it up there 1374 so that's a new area that was created Let's go see if we can create any other zones. I'm gonna just double check here. So we've got a candle here, 930 candle. This candle makes a new roll here, you see? But this candle comes back to revisit that area. So this candle basically uh, creates a failed single for me. That's just how I name it. It's failed in my opinion. It's not a supply or an important zone for me. And when it comes to an area where, let's go see if we can find a new one. I'm going to copy one of these in case we need to find another. It's just me creating these zones. All right, look at this. Okay, so we basically gapped up. I don't put gaps as, uh, for me, you can just ident identify this. I mean, I mean if you really want to you know, create, and for me, I don't want to really look into gaps. Okay, it's important. I mean, does this gap get filled? Yes, it got filled here, and then we, we resume. So that's how important it is. I mean, if, when there's a gap like this, I'm not a really good trader when it comes to gaps. I like to write. I rather identify these zones and uh, create a bias from there. So let's go see here. So I could see that Google's been gapping around a lot these days. All right, so that's one. Let's see if we can get another one here. I think there's something. I mean, I'm I'm pretty quick with this now. I'm gotten to a level where I can identify them pretty easily. I think we just identify something here. So anyway, I could just create it from here. Uh, that's my info line. Here we are. Okay, let me see. Is it? Let's go double check. This is 9.30. The new candle, the new high was created by this candle. Look. And the next one came and touched it. So this is not a good demand zone. Okay. Although, I mean, look, when it comes to support and all that, it's been it's been revisited and all that, but it's not a valid demand area. Okay, so let's see if we can find another one. Um, this is 9.30, so that doesn't work. Uh, I think I just identified it. All right. There we go. 
Uh, no, that's not the right one. Sorry, it's the same one. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go back. Okay, anything interesting around here? I haven't noticed. Uh, all right, here we are. 9.30. This candle creates a new low. This candle is not able to retest that level, so we've got it. We've got a level here that looks pretty decent to me. Let's go into peak this here. Just the price that is 124.22. My line is awkward, so I have to correct that. 124.22. And this is a supply zone, so 124.22, supply. Right? How does that look? There we are. That's our line, and it's supposed to be green. That's right. Where was it? That was a supply zone, okay? So for now, for me, this is very well developed. As you can see, developed means we've had at least four TPOs that have gone under it, above it. You know, we've had participation there. We've seen a decent amount of uh, candles that trade there. And we, could, we never came back to test it. So this one here was a bit tricky, but again, it's a zone. This supply zone, the market, the seller should have taken control here the next day it gaps and then we gap above it so this area i mean sellers definitely definitely got trapped in this area okay so that's an important uh, thing to look obviously i mean we're in a situation where google's been gapping a lot so i mean i'm gonna try to see if i could get something else for you guys here Like I said, I'm doing a stock that I just basically picked out and I uh, was doing this for I can, a friend who wanted to look into this and wasn't sure if he was getting this right. Here we are. This is a demand zone. So we're in a new session, 930 Eastern candle. We've got a new high with this candle. This candle is never able to come back to test this level. Boom. They, there we have a tremendous area uh, that is basically a demand zone. I'm just going to go and write it down because I go and post this after on trading view. So it's just done. 11.52. 11.50. Imagine buying Google at 11.52 and writing it all the way up to the new highs that we've made today. That's unbelievable. So again, great bias. We've got more than four TPOs. Great way of really identifying great structure here. The market gave us a great entry. Never looked back, consolidated, very bullish, and just gapping around all the place. Uh, this one maybe could have been the area for me to exit on this one because, again, like I said, 150 to 1222, that would have been a nice trade. That would have been a great uh, winner on calls if we had. Uh... All right, so this is Google. All right, so let's try to see if we can do it for another stock. I had uh, basically uh, done this for um, Alibaba. Let's go see. There's several good stocks that this really worked out perfectly in the last couple of days. All right, here we are. <laughs> look at this. So basically, I mean, uh, the way I look at the, um, the single prints is really, like I said, supply and demand areas. I call it a supply and demand. Uh, like I said, various traders may, may call them different names. I like to use uh, the volume profile, and market profile for indexes as well. And basically, I like to have a bias on what's going on. In Alibaba, if we look at this stock, going back, uh, I think I went as far as Anglo, very far. Anyway. Not important the most important structure here so basically you know a lot of people talk about trend and the trend is your friend and all that but I mean look if clearly the trend on the long-term perspective it's been it's been going up right so I mean if it's been going up where do I buy where do I add in 
that's very discretional, right? A lot of people won't know what to do with that. So um, I'm just going to go back here and identify these structures going back like the last one, two, or three months. And in Alibaba, I had basically, I'm not sure if this is actually correct, but let's just go search. I don't think that is, yeah. This is not correct. Uh, I think I just copied this anyway. It's not important. It's just that I wanted to show someone maybe that it's not a new high that's made on the next 30 minute candle. It has to be a brand new high for the day or a brand new low for the day. You get it? So if we just go back and we scroll at this, and once I once you get really used to this, it's pretty fast. This is 9:30 Eastern. This candle makes a new low, breaks this candle here, breaks that. You see here? This candle breaks the low of that one. Okay? But this candle comes back to retouch that. So this is a single print area that got filled. So I don't really pay attention to that. Okay? So it got filled. If you want to trade this on a short-term basis, the way I would say this is sellers were in control here lost control here we really had some good development here and sellers lost control here if you really want to base it that way go ahead um i don't like if the next candle goes and touch touches it it's my little uh nuance i don't want to see a candle that touches that to really show the significance and importance of that area Again, in this case, the, the area seems to be really important. As you can see, the market did come back and retouch this. It got developed, and from there, buying Alibaba at 175, imagine rolling that all the way up, right? But sometimes uh, it's how simple and easy it is. But trading is not easy, and uh, you know, look, various strategies and all that. And this is my strategy to look at the market in a, a short term period. And if you want to just maybe go and find another opportunity, I'm just going to scroll here to see if we could find something else for Alibaba here. Um, there we are. Just found one right there. You know, once your eyes get used to it, it's pretty quick. We've got a new low here in the day. This is a session. Boom. That's our line right there. Now, I want to show you guys something that's going to be really important to understand. Let me just get this correct with the coloring and everything. Okay. Oops, so okay, let's get the coloring right, and then I'm just going to show you guys something. Look how this area was so important, right? This is my area. We had the new okay, so that's a new area. Okay, this candle made a new low. This candle never came back to touch it. Single print confirmed one two three at least four candles that have developed under that as you can see market rallied into it came back for a couple of days even almost a week you could have bought a put here made money on it uh, you could have bought some kind of a call credit spread at the highs and you could have made money you know there's various option plays that can be done the market comes up gaps above it closes above it and look that area always gets retested and now I'm back at least three weeks later, and that area is still important. Look at the importance. But look at this. That area was important. But we I just noticed that there was a single print right here. Look, single print here. We had a previous single print that held for a couple. We've got good development. What is that? 220? All right. This was this was February. So February 20th. We could have shorted Alibaba up February 20th. The market came back, so this whole zone was a supply area. Market came back, revisited, short again, and never looked back. Look how beautiful that is. Sometimes, like I said, that's how simple it is. And then, basically, market uh, stopped, and the general market around the end of March had recovered. So Alibaba basically had a good turnaround there. Uh, can really identify a good demand area for Alibaba except that I just noticed that there's something here. Here we are. Once again, there. This candle made a new high for this day and we had beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see the wick of this candle here. So the wicks do count. 
But I mean, again, if you had seen this new high, came back the week tested, again, if you want to use that, I wouldn't have counted this as a good demand area, but look, clearly the market loved it, bounced off of it many times. Yeah, it's, that's how it is sometimes, right? 30 minute chart comes from the market, market profile structure. Uh, there we are, that's one. I just noticed that Alibaba probably had another good zone right here. If we could go and get it here. All right, I think this one's clear. This area, this candle makes a new high for the day. This candle does not touch it. Yes, it's very close to it, but it doesn't touch it. For me, that's an important area. For me, this is very important. And at the same time, I'm gonna just put add to a little nuance here. Uh, I didn't mention it here, but what I like about this area is that market, so in Alibaba, this 196 area goes up, comes down, comes up, comes down. It kind of like, you know, the buyers get trapped, sellers get trapped, buyers get trapped, sellers get trapped. So this area becomes a very important demand zone. And I like to call it demand zone that's hidden. I don't know if you guys get, get, get that. But anytime you get a zone like that, it's an important area because it's an inflection point where there was good participation both ways and then we just had a tremendous retest here. I mean, look at that. This is really beautiful. And the market just climbed off of it. That same area, that same hidden zone. So look, I mean, look at this. For the next four, five, six days, Alibaba just went up. You would have bought 10 shares, you know, and you still would have made some money, basically. If you would have bought a call, out, out, out the out the money call, you still would have made money for the next four or five days. You get it? And the other thing is that same area became look another look how important that area became again. You see, it's it's unbelievable how those same areas come back. And I'm not sure about this here, but uh, I don't think that's accurate. I mean, don't pay attention to that. So like I said, I mean market. Demand zone, supply zone with the market profile theory. Um, if you want my quick analysis on Alibaba at the moment, this thing is really stuck between a range. This 215, 218 area to this 194, 196, which was previous demand. I think it's just going to bounce around this. So it's got also some kind of news coming around. So as you can see, the market, this is basically then sellers got trapped here. Buyers got trapped there, so it's basically a range bound market so far. Let's go, and this is Alibaba, so let's go do some other stock now. All right, so this is Visa, a great stock that this strategy has been working out very well. I drew this uh, candle here on this level here on Visa, which was 190. It was the close of that day. And I kind of thought that this level would become important in the next couple of days, just because, yes, next day the market, uh, this stock Visa did gap up, and it closed the gap. But again, you see, this area just became very important. Uh, it's not exactly what I look for when it comes to the supply and demand, honestly. It was the last candle of the day. Okay, so that's one thing I want to make sure that we understand. It's the last candle of the day, okay, the last 30 minutes. In market profile, uh, they call this the M period, basically the last period of the day where we have an excess. The market, basically, what you do is in market profile structure, you highlight the high and the low of that M period, that last period. So every 30 minute has a, a letter to it. And this M period generally is called the excess. So we had an excess at the end of the day, okay? So as you can see, 191 to 189 was like a buffer zone when the market kind of like rebalanced around here, consolidated for uh, Visa. And it's been basically doing the same thing here again. So the reason why it's not exactly what I look for is because it's the last period and it's kind of like the excess nuance on market profile. So that excess nuance kind of says, well, you know, 
if the market is accepting trade above it, it's bullish. If it's accepting trade below it, it's bearish. But again, when it comes to stocks, it could vary a bit. And in this case, we've had a new candle form here on the 9.30. Okay. Just uh, want to double check that if that's accurate actually, but it's not exactly um, a single print because it takes the candle of the last day. So I like to, it, a single has to always be, be based on the exact um, uh, session. So this is a session, I need to have a single in this session. I need to have a single in this session. I can't base a single in this session from something that I see on the previous session. You get it? In this case, we have an M period here the last candle of the day that became an important uh, you know uh, the new high of the day close above it uh, I'm just gonna put it in green for you to you know see that that's an important area for me uh, going forward I just want to see how you know market uh, prices develop in those areas so this here it's not developed well now it is developed it's I have to update that this is going to need to be developed so we need to put this here. What is this? It's 192.42. 192.42. It needs development. So I want to see how prices uh, develop above this, below this. I want participation in this area. So if we were just to discuss what's going on in Visa, between 192 and 190, it's chop zone. No edge to trade this or to have a position in this stock. That's how simple it is okay all right so microsoft is one soft one stock that i haven't done so this is going to be a nice uh, way to probably end this video uh, all right so i see a single print right here that candle if i can just do it that way that candle made a new high a new low sorry 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 a new low okay look how important that is that was 9.30 Eastern, uh, oh, is that the last candle over there? No, it's 9.30, 9.30 candle. All right, so this made a new low of the day. And uh, this candle, which was the last candle of the day, retouched it. So. This last candle actually made a single print area for me. Since it's the last candle of the day, it's important. Um, I mean, you could basically say, I want to see what prices do below this last candle of the day. So the market opens in it, very neutral open, and then we dive through it. So basically, once we dive through it with a new single print, which was basically not created on this candle here, it was created on this one here and you see it made a new low this one never touched it so this is red this is a new uh, supply area market came you know it did low below it came back and there is a very strong we tested it so this got developed and for me this becomes basically an area that's really important because as you can see here so it got trapped Sales got trapped. I think 180.02. This could become a very important area. Important area that could be basically a hidden zone where, once again, like I mentioned, it could definitely be a very good area to lean on for long term 180 uh, demand. So you could basically look at Microsoft for the next couple of days, this hidden demand zone. I wouldn't really see Microsoft above 180, come back, we test higher prices, okay? Low 180 would be skeptical, but I mean, this is how this strategy works. Okay, so let's go see if we can see anything. Uh, I just want to go back and show you how this would have worked in, let's say, February or March. So I'm scrolling back a bit last year let's say the high that we had here in February all right so very important uh, generally speaking when a market or a stock makes a high it always always comes back to test it like 
it's uh, if it's if it could be a very simple recast, but generally speaking, it does kind of recast it. Uh, this here, this candle made a new roll here, but this candle touched that area, so this supply zone is not valid. Which one is valid? Let's go see if we can see something here. 9:30. Here we are. Boom. This is. So a lot of those traders will say, oh, I want to wait for confirmation and all that. So if you had shorted here, you would have basically had some heat for a couple of days. Not sure if the market's going to come back. But this one here would have been an excellent entry to buy some puts or to basically go for 185.62. Go for a bearish, uh, it could have been a look. It could have been a short-term bearish kind of thing. So it's a supply zone that developed. Uh, I'll put DV here to show you that it's been developed. Why is it developed? We had at least four or five candles below it, you know, to really show that there was participation and the importance of this area. I'm just going to extend this if I can. Extend to right. Boom. What is that? 185.62? All right. So that same level, 2562, that was created on the 20th of February. If we just come back to recent area, look at that. Previous supply becomes supply again. So this is not a joke. It really does work. Okay. So that area came to build another resistance area. I mean, it, I mean resistance and, and support is not really something I use in my vocabulary. Uh, it's just very technical analysis. It's, it's it's a bit old school. It's used to it used to work what 30, 40 years ago. Now it's uh, less accurate. The market has changed. Participants have different views. Uh, much more dynamic markets now. Uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Okay, this strategy also works very well on choppy. Areas. When it's choppy, and you're like, what is going on here? Like, why is price going above, below, and what's going on? It gives you great context. If you're able to identify these supply and demand zones with these single prints on stocks, again, it does work on indices as well, but on stocks, when it's choppy like this, it really gives good context. I'm just going to show you an example here. I quickly saw this, uh, just want to see if this is accurate, okay, so I'm just going to identify this zone here, okay, just for you guys to see how this would have worked, I mean, first of all, this is M period in Microsoft, uh, I'm not sure, this could have been, er this could have been earnings, you know, as you can see, in the next couple of days, the market opens below it, comes back to retest it, so we're actually rejecting that last period, so that's a sign in market profile where, you know, the market profile uh, teachers, uh, the Deltons and all that, they always say we're rejecting, we're, prices are not accepting. Okay, look, that's one thing to know. As you can see, we are rejecting this last candle. It is the last M period candle. And it seems like the market is, you know, basically trading below it in the next couple of days, right? What? Okay, if we just leave those lines, it's not a problem. I wanted to identify an area of demand here. I think I had seen it quickly. Um, uh, no, uh, maybe I missed it there. Oh, was it? Was it here? Was that the supply? Was it here? No, nope. because this candle made a new low, but in this same candle we came back and we, you know, we came back into that area. So I wouldn't give importance, but obviously it did become an important area uh, going forward. I was going to say, uh, I had seen something here, which I'm not sure why I can't see it now. Um, so basically, you see here, this is not a valid demand zone because you make a new high, but the next candle comes and touches that, so it's not accurate. In choppy areas like this, um, like I said, once you've identified, let's say we do this, we keep it like that, you've identified a demand or supply zone that was created in this in, in this area, which obviously here we don't have an example, but uh, maybe we do. Wait, uh, no, 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 it's not, it's not accurate. 
it's yeah this is really basically this last candle trading below it you know we're kind of rejecting that so that's what market profile is generally mentioning uh, I couldn't find a supply or demand area here that no single print that was really important when, when I look at it I couldn't find something important here it was really like four or five days of chop I mean clearly this area you know it took a while before we kind of like traded in it so look maybe uh, in the future we could look into that the excesses on stocks I mean for a while you could have done an iron calendar on this and the decay would have just died forever like look at that um anything important that i can see in microsoft here i'm trying to see if i could find an area there we are I found one right there. so once you really get used to this this really works perfectly i mean again it doesn't mean that levels will not hold or levels will not will not uh, basically how you call it uh, will not uh, fail but this is a demand zone where the next candle never touches it this is an important demand so i would have liked sellers to control this area next day the market gaps up one test two tests this area becomes hidden and seems like the sellers got trapped here and then boom short selling and market just flies so that same area comes back we can't hold above this line so that 186 is going to be a very important level for Microsoft going forward. We had a demand zone, a demand zone that was created. Didn't we just see that earlier? I think so. This here was a demand zone that was created, right? Seems like market is just below it. Before I forget, I wanted to show an example of a stock like Tesla. Uh, basically, Tesla is very, very choppy. It's a very volatile stock, but this does work on Tesla as well. So, the example I have here is I put this gray because I wanted to see what market does at this level. This was a brand new high that was made in this session. Okay, we came back and we, we tested it, and we had an important. Um, M period here in last uh, candle of the day created this here and I could see that Tesla is having a hard time with this area so I put like a note for myself to watch this zone so Tesla 820 to 816 is really critical and then we had this one uh, sorry 804 demand area that was a previous area from yeah that day there that held once twice so 804 is like the line of line in the sand for Tesla it's a stock that's between 804 and 822 you probably just I mean again here this is a 930 candle you know a lot of chop very volatile uh, but if you go back it has given great signals look this is a great demand area went up a great handle 804 this you buy calls on this 804 to 838 look uh, you know that would have been a great profit i'm sure you would have held at least one run and hoping the market flies above it i would have been out with this retest i you know if you made some money on that uh, and then this area so we trade above it trade below it that's why this 804 for me is very important it's kind of like a hidden demand zone comes back and then again same level holds again so that 804.33 is going to be very critical for Tesla if you see uh, sellers coming in below that to watch out because I think we could go back and retest easily this is why support and resistance is not important because we would have had, oh, this is support here at 764, right? 764 will be support on the stock, but I don't pay attention to support. I want to see 740, 760. This is the next demand zone to hold. If that holds, then perfect. Um, 680 was an important level. It held many times. So I have notes from previous sessions. I had posted this on TradingView and uh wanted to 
Oh yeah, 860 supply zone. Look at that. Look at this. 860 going back all the way. I think this is. I'm sure it's February. Yeah, 860 created. I don't know why I didn't identify this, but it doesn't matter anyway. 860 was identified as an important zone for me, and it's been holding. I think it does go back uh, much, uh, much further. January. Okay, so that's weird. All right. Anyway, that's the same level, and then we have this 740 that hold many that held many times, and then once we caught above 740, which was around here, right? So the green level, as you see, 740, very choppy in this area. That's why it's important to have a bias, and you know, you don't want to stick to stick to support and resistance for this kind of stuff. Um, that's about it. Hope this helps, and I was able to basically um, show this to a friend, and he was able to understand it a bit better. And uh, I think it was a bit clear now. This is a time, price, opportunity, market profile for Nasdaq. I'm using Sierra Church for this, so same thing applies. Uh, single prints are a brand new high of the day you see this was the opening market went up here a brand new high here it failed but sellers are basically not able to go uh, below this area we have one two three four candles that have at least developed above it so very bullish market here at the moment for me when it comes to the way it closed on uh, May 27th, uh, 2020. Okay, uh, try not to. Where am I? Okay, so let's get this out of here. I just want to show you that. And also a little teaser on NQ, on NASDAQ. This is the time point of control that I have on regular sessions. So the RTH, right? This is a regular session. Whenever you have a TPOC, which is this area here, and if the next day we're trading below that area, there's a good chance that the market has a bit of a bearish bias. Okay, I went, I've been back testing this, I've been looking at it, and it works perfectly on NASDAQ, which is because probably NASDAQ has less volume. And you know it wants to look for liquidity. Wants to see areas where there was much more um, participation. Uh, like I said, it works perfectly on Nasdaq. Give you give you an example. This was a time price opportunity in Nasdaq that day. So the market participated well above it. And that same day, you could have had tremendous trades going below that because if you had momentum riding right below that and sellers coming in you could have really had a good opportunity to sell this here so that would be 93.86 to at least you know 93.13 this is a previous tpoc that held so i always like to highlight all the tpocs from various sessions look same area held. i rejected here overnight we basically came over it and we're accepting price above this area so this 93.10 would have been important Come back, retest this, hold above it again. Market opens just above the TPOC. Very bullish open here. And it just continues going up. I mean, it um, works very well with NASDAQ. Like I said, it gives you a great bias. Um, the TPOC is something that you could basically see with uh, market profile here. On trading view, I don't have that. Uh, on train view it would be a bit more complicated to get but it's the same basic strategy where you want to see where which price this is a range of a day here right on Tesla so if we just take an example here we have a session here where we have a session where Tesla basically went from 807 to the high as 843 you want to see where time was spent the most in the session so it's almost like halfway of the whole day's range which would be approximately if you look at it here 
we would have seen one, two, um, three, four, five, six, seven candles that have, that would have touched this area, which is the 823.21, 823.21. And next day, the 823.21 is revisited, okay, and we just flushed down. Same, I mean, on an intraday, day-to-day uh, -day basis, the time price operator, the TPOC, the time point of control could be very important. Um, it works on stocks, it works on indices as well. Uh, look at look into that. I mean, I don't basically trade off of that because uh, uh, you know uh, I like to focus mostly on uh, futures, ES and um, Nasdaq, and uh, that could be an interesting interesting way to look into the markets if ever you wanted to see the T pop on stocks. All right, hope this helps. Enjoy your day, and uh, let me know if. Uh, if you'd like to have uh, other videos like this, uh, you can follow me on Twitter and also on my email and uh, on uh, how do you call it Trading View. My name is Osmoray. Hope that helps. Enjoy your day. Here's my information again. Bye bye.